and welcome to Quality Assurance Measures Training. This video series is designed to provide the information and tools to help you understand Ontario Regulation 299-10 regarding quality assurance measures requirements made under the services and supports to promote the social inclusion of persons with Developmental Disabilities Act 2008 and how these requirements change the way you'll be delivering services and supports to persons with developmental disabilities. Since the changes impact service agencies in many aspects, this training provides a good opportunity to conduct a thorough review of your agency policies and procedures. Don't worry, we'll be walking you through all the steps towards implementing the quality assurance measures requirements for persons with developmental disabilities. In addition to this training video, agencies will be provided with secure access to a web portal that will include reference materials and printable resources. The purpose of this training video is to promote a common understanding for quality service and supports for persons with a developmental disability and help service agencies, application entities, and third parties to meet the quality assurance measures requirements of Regulation 299-10. The training will also provide links to key resources and provide training specific to abuse awareness and prevention. We will be covering a broad range of topics, which include knowledge of the regulation, its vision, the new changes, and what the regulation does to transform the services and supports delivered to persons with developmental disabilities. Understanding the regulation and its application to each type of support provided to persons with a developmental disability. Specific indicators for quality assurance measures and requirements to ensure compliance with Regulation 299-10. New language and important definitions. And education and awareness, building on abuse prevention and reporting with respect to persons with a developmental disability. The regulation is divided into five parts, with a training video for each part. Segment two introduces you to Regulation 299-10, as well as the definitions and application. In segment three, our focus is on part two of the regulation, which describes specific quality assurance measures requirements that apply to all service agencies. Segment four outlines quality assurance measures on behavioral intervention strategies in part three of the regulation. Segment five covers quality assurance measures for residential services and supports in part four of the regulation. Segment six outlines the quality assurance measures for application entities in part five of the regulation. Segment seven provides abuse prevention training for boards of directors, staff, and volunteers. Segment eight is about providing abuse training for persons with developmental disabilities. This concludes our introduction to training on Regulation 299-10. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to Quality Assurance Measures Training. In segment two, we will be taking a look at Regulation 299-10 regarding quality assurance measures, its vision, the new changes, and what the regulation does to transform the services and supports delivered to persons with a developmental disability. Then, we'll move on and take a look at the definitions and implementations required for all service agencies and application entities. How do the new quality assurance measures differ from the requirements of the Developmental Services Act Regulation 272? The Developmental Services Act, DSA, is 36 years old. The DSA and its regulation were made at a time when services for people with a developmental disability were just beginning to move from a model of institutional care to community living, such as group home settings. Since that time, all of the province's government-operated residential facilities for adults with a developmental disability have closed. The continuum of services and supports for adults in the community has grown, and service agencies take an individualized, community-based approach to supporting people. The services and supports to promote social inclusion of persons with a developmental disability act, 2008, 
received royal assent on October 8, 2008. As part of the new Act, the Ministry of Community and Social Services developed Ontario Regulation 299-10 regarding quality assurance measures requirements to promote a common understanding for quality services and supports for adults with developmental disability. The regulation will set quality assurance measures for ministry-funded service agencies and application entities that provide services and supports to adults with a developmental disability. Quality assurance measures promote good services and supports. The regulation will promote social inclusion and help us protect people with a developmental disability from serious health and safety problems by clarifying the role of agencies in reporting suspected cases of abuse, clearly outlining requirements for safety around agency-owned and operated buildings, as well as entity-owned and operated buildings, clearly outlining requirements for the use of behavior intervention strategies with people with a developmental disability who also have challenging behaviors. This regulation will help agencies and application entities provide services and supports in a consistent way throughout Ontario. It will also bring greater peace of mind to the families and caregivers of people with a developmental disability. The regulation on quality assurance measures was approved on July 7, 2010 and will come into effect on January 1, 2011 for service agencies. Application entities have not yet been established. The later effective date, July 1, 2011, corresponds with Part 5 of the regulation that is related to application entity functions and will come into effect at that time. Application entities will serve as the regional contact points for ministry-funded adult developmental services and will make sure that everyone who is looking for developmental services gets treated in the same way and use clear and consistent eligibility criteria and a single standard assessment process. The regional contact points are responsible for the provision of functions to support the provincial application process for those seeking access to ministry-funded adult developmental services within each region, including information provision, eligibility determination, intake support, determination and reassessment of service and support needs, service navigation and matching, and future direct funding agreement administration. The implementation of application entities as the regional contact points are one of the most important parts of our long-term plan for the transformation of the developmental services system and are key to bringing our vision of a more equitable and easily accessed developmental services system to life. Whom does Regulation 299-10 impact? Regulation 299-10 applies to all application entities and ministry-funded developmental service agencies who provide the following services and supports to persons with developmental disabilities. Supported group living residences means a staff-supported residence operated by a service agency in which three or more persons with developmental disabilities reside and receive services and supports from the agency. Intensive support residences means a staff-supported residence operated by a service agency in which one or two persons with developmental disability reside and in which each resident requires and receives intensive support that meets the prescribed requirements. Community participation services and supports means services and supports to assist a person with a developmental disability with social and recreational activities work activities, volunteer activities, and such other services and supports as may be prescribed. Activities of daily living services and supports means services and supports to assist a person with a developmental disability with personal hygiene, dressing, grooming, meal preparation, administration of medication, and includes training related to money management, banking, using public transportation, and other life skills, and such other services and supports as may be prescribed. 
Caregiver respite services and supports means services and supports to assist a person with a developmental disability by a person other than the primary caregiver of the person with a developmental disability and that are provided for the purpose of providing a temporary relief to the primary caregiver. How will the regulation and compliance procedures impact service agencies and organizations? All service agencies should review current policies and procedures to ensure they reflect the regulation and that the date policies are written, amended, and implemented is documented. Service agencies will review their policies and procedures with its board of directors, staff, and volunteers. Please note that the Ministry, as part of its compliance process, will review policies and procedures and look for evidence that they are being applied as written and that all levels of the agency is aware of the policies and procedures. It is required that service agencies obey all laws that apply to the services and supports they provide. This includes federal and provincial laws and municipal bylaws. These requirements are not included in this regulation. It is important to understand the terms and language in the regulation. All policies and procedures are rules service agencies and application entities must follow. Policies and procedures will be in writing, dated, and reflect the service agencies or applicant entities most current.